Welcome to the first pancake. Let's dive in. Welcome back. Today we're going to tackle a very common use case with drop down menus that has actually come up twice for me once in creating our upcoming wedding planning spreadsheet and second being at work when we were prioritizing various goals for the year. How do you remove items from a drop down menu once you've placed the option in the spreadsheet? So you can imagine when looking at, say, a seating chart at a wedding, you've got a hundred people to place. You're trying to figure out where everybody goes. And if you put Joe in two different seats, you're going to end up with all sorts of mayhem. So we're going to use the option around work for prioritization of goals. It's a little bit easier to grasp and wrap your head around, but we will be building a wedding planning spreadsheet, which will make your life a little bit easier should you be having some upcoming nuptials. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a list of goals. I'm going to do that on sheet one, and I'm actually going to rename that to be goals. Now, I'm not going to put any actual goals in here. I'm just going to put goal one, and I'm going to put 25 of them or so. Let's just bring that down to one more. There we go, perfect. So we're going to have goals across the top, ranking for Nathan, ranking for Kelly. And let's do a little bit of styling in here just to make it a little bit easier to read. Okay, so we're going to, first of all, lock the cells in the header and lock the first column. So that way, wherever we scroll, however many people are going to be ranking, it makes life a little bit easier. Then we're going to increase the size of this header. And we're going to go for bold. We're going to increase the font size to say 12 to make it easier to read. Let's make these a little bit bigger again. And whoop, we will center all of this. So we're going to center all of them in the cells and then center them vertically because it just makes it prettier for the headings. Let's swap out the color to be a light gray and the background just for funsies. Let's do a nice green. All right, we need to rank these 25 goals in order of a priority, but I don't want to end up double placing all of these things. How do we do it? Well, if we go into data validation, and if we add a rule, we go to drop down, you can do drop down, drop down from range. And if you look through here, there's no obvious option to say, this is what it should be. Now we're eventually going to use drop down from range, but for right now, let's actually leave it at none. And I'm going to actually cancel that rule. There we go. Now. What we need here is two pieces of information. The first bit of information we need is what are the ranks? So in this case, it's very straightforward. It's going to be one through 25. So something I learned from another person on social media, we're going to use sequence. We're going to have 25 rows and that's all we need because it will assume one column and sequence of one, 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 one. Okay. Now with this, I also personally like to do this, which is I copied all of the cells using control C or command C, and then I pasted the values so that it's no longer associated with the formula and I just have the sequence of numbers. So to paste values, you can hit command C or control C to copy those cells. And then to paste values, you can do control or command forward slash to pull up the keyboard shortcuts if you don't know them off by heart. I know that paste values is shift command V, which will paste the values and not the formula. We're going to call this the key and we're going to use Nathan's rank list and Kelly's rank list. Now this is going to be a formula. So that formula needs to reference this key. So we know that there's 25 items and 
we need to reference back to which ones have been used here. So we're going to use a few different formulas. So we're going to use filter, we're going to use not, and we're going to use count if. And we'll go through each of those as we work through this. Okay, so we know that we need to filter the data. So we need to filter this key because that's the base data that we're working with. Okay, so that range can be pulled in there and then the commas separate it. Now, the condition we're going to use is not. Not returns the opposite of a provided logical value. If what we do, let's actually subtract this out. So we're just going to do filter there and it's going to return an error for a second. If we do count if, let's try that out. So we're going to do, we're going to do equals count if and we're going to use this range and we're going to use back on the goals page since this is under Kelly's column we're going to use that there so if we grab that okay so currently now let's take a look at what that looks like so all of that then became if you notice all of those cells started to move around now this might actually still work but what we're going to do instead is I'm going to go up and make these absolute references. So to do that on a Mac, you do uh, function F4. And then all of the dollar signs denote that that is a locked value. So in this case, we want to lock all of the values. You could just lock the rows. Or you could lock the columns. Or you can lock nothing, which makes it a relative value. We're going to stick with an absolute value here. And we're also going to stick with an absolute value in here because we don't want the range to move based on what it is that we're working with. OK, so if we do that, what this is going to come down to is now when we reference all of that, the formula stays the same all the way down. And if I go in and put, say, number two here, in goal one. Now this is currently looking at which one of these is in which position over here. Okay, so now what we're going to do, you see this filter, and we're going to take a look at this, and we're going to combine those two together. So in the condition, we're actually going to take count if we're actually going to start by wrapping that in a not function or formula and it's going to return false so if we stretch that all the way down what happens so what happened is those binary values of ones and zeros or however many were in there now return true false and we've got uh, line 10 or sorry, number 10, line 11, has number 25. And this brings back all of the values that are here as, so this one is false because it is being used. It's no longer a value that's available. Now we're going to take this entire formula and we're going to drop that into, so I'm going to copy that with command C. And I'm going to jump into here and I'm going to place this as the condition. And I'm going to remove this formula for now. Now currently those positions are taken out and what I've realized is that those are going for the position in the string because I actually did these two conditions backwards. So we're going to flip flop them. I'm going to chop that out. And I'm going to paste that in here with that as the value. 
So now we are comparing the range that we're looking at, okay, is going to be on the goals page. So what we've already placed. And the criterion is, does it exist in this, uh, this range, which happens to be over here? Okay. So now when we hit enter there, the remaining values no longer have 2, 3, or 25. Okay, so it's 2 is missing, 3 is missing, and 25 is missing, which is exactly what we were hoping for. Now, what you'll notice is that I've now made this under Nathan's rank, where this should actually be under Kelly's rank. So we're going to chop this out and paste it in here and delete that formula. Now we're going to do the same thing by moving this over, but you can see that the ranges didn't change. On this page, we can go and just swap this to B because we know that that is the range that we're going to be comparing it against. And I have all 25 available here for Nathan's rank. Okay. So you can see here we've used filter, we've used not, and we've used count if to figure out which ones are not available. Now here comes the fun part. If we then go into that range of cells, look for view more cell actions and do data validation, we can now add that rule, add the drop down. We'll do it from a range, which is going to pop up this little modal window. And you can select the appropriate column. And when you do that, you're going to see when you come back here, there's a bunch of drop down options. And if I select number 10, number 10 is no longer available as an option. This will make your life so much easier when you have to rank things or place things. And there's only ever going to be one. Now there is one caveat. You'll notice here that it does return an invalid input because it must fall within the specified range. That specified range happens to be over here. But because we're removing it every time we're placing something, that's an expected outcome. So just ignore that little warning that's in there and all will be well. Now let's do the same thing here. I'm going to delete all of those values. I'm going to do the data validation. We're going to do add a new rule, drop down from range, select the range, go to the other sheet. And this time we're going to pick Kelly's column and hit OK and done. You can color code this. You can swap it out for just the arrows rather than the coins. You can style it however you like to make it look. But as you place those values, let's say Kelly and I disagree on 5, 8, and 16. You can see that those 5, 8, and 16 are now removed from this list. And they are removed from the drop down menu that you're, repair, uh, you're referencing. So I hope today has allowed you to optimize and make things like ranking a little bit easier. And we'll see you in the next video. Like and subscribe if you learned something. And remember, anything worth doing well is worth doing badly first.